Oh, uh, Jose's not here. All right, guys. Um, remember, when we're solving, when it says solve, you guys need to get something in your head. You can only solve for one variable. Right? You need to get a variable equal something. Now, obviously, something later on we'll be talking about that. But so far, all we're talking about, when I say solve, you need to get a variable equal something. So therefore, if you guys look at this problem, we have three variables. Now, it's, yes, they're all the same variable, but we have three different of them. We have negative p, a positive 6p, and another 6p on the other side of the inequality. So we know we can get rid of, you know, we know we can add and subtract on both sides of inequalities. We also know that when we have like terms on the same side of inequality, we can combine them. So how can I combine a negative p plus a positive 6p? Well, you can just say negative p plus 6p, or 6p minus p gives you 5p. There we go. So you combine like terms. Now we have a variable on both sides. Remember, when we have a variable on both sides, we get rid of the smaller variable. It's just going to help you avoid negative numbers. So what Caitlin will do is she'll subtract a 5p. And you know what, in this case, and actually in this case I'm going to use a negative just to help us out. Actually, I'll do it both ways. So you subtract a 5p, and you get 0 is less than or equal to 4 plus p. Right? Now, to solve for p, I need to get rid of the 4. So you subtract the 4. So therefore, you have negative 4 is less than or equal to p. Right? Now, some of you might not like that method. You might say, well, what if happens if I would have subtracted the 6? Let's do that in a separate way. Let's do this again. So here, if I want to solve it, let's say I subtract the 6p. Let's see, will I get the same answer? Well, 5p minus 6p is a negative p less than or equal to 4. So guess what? I need to do what? Divide by negative 1, right? Therefore, I have p greater than or equal to a negative 4. P is greater than or equal to a negative 4. P is greater than or equal to a negative 4. Okay? So yes, it's the exact same thing. So how are we going to grab this? I go down to negative 4. There would be negative 5, negative 6, negative 3, negative 2. Make a nice big dot. Is that less than or equal to? Yes, it's less than or equal to, so therefore it's a closed dot. How do I know it's closed? Is negative 4 less than or equal to negative 4? And that's true, right? Because negative 4 is equal to negative 4. So that's why it's a closed dot whenever it's equal to. Then I would say, all right, am I going to go to the right or to the left? And if, if you guys, a lot of you would say, oh, you always go the direction on the inequality sign. Well, which one? This one or this one? See how these are pointing in different ways? Just say it out loud with your variable first. <coughs> P, the letters that are going to make this inequality true, have to be greater than or equal to negative 4. So which one is greater than or equal to negative 4? Negative 5 or negative 3? You could say negative 3. That's true. That's false. So we shade in the area of the true. Done. Okay.